folks. We're going to get going. Welcome to Practical Shooting Fundamentals. It's going to be a fun weekend. Uh, first things first, how about this? We don't expect you to be a brand new shooter in two days. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way. What we're going to work on is practical shooting from the ground up. We're going to work on just specific aspects of your shooting, whether it's stance, the way you grip the pistol, the way you transition between targets. Just work on one thing at a time. While we're doing that, the drills are going to be focused in a way that we're just assessing one thing for each drill. For example, if we're working on how you grip the pistol, we're doing rapid fire to the target. We're not going to talk to you about how you draw or maybe your feet are too far apart or close to whatever. We don't care. It'll be just assessing that one thing. That makes it easy for you guys because then we don't expect you like, hey, I tell you to do one thing then we move on down the road. You, I don't expect you to keep doing that one thing. Your habits are probably just going to go back to the way they were. Well, if habits the way we do things, you're likely to get feedback for some changes you want to make. And in the moment when you're focusing on just that one thing, you'll likely be able to make that change. But when we move on to the next drill, assessing one specific thing, that old thing will probably go back to the way it was. That's okay. That's part of the plan. Yeah. Uh, for us, like a lot of this is just going to re reveal your habits to you and reveal to you the fix. You won't actually be able to, you know, get it to where you don't have to consciously uh, like let's say your grip is messed up you, if you consciously think about it you'll get to the right grip and you'll be able to shoot well but then when you have something else you want to think about like you can't do two things at once that's kind of the problem and uh, it'll be put back on you to uh, change these habits after the class um, but during the class we can definitely show you what you're doing yeah you'll walk away you'll knowing what well if you're paying attention what you need to do to change or what habits you want to change and how to change them. If you're not paying attention. If you're not paying attention, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, as far as the schedule, uh, it'll be two days, this, I mean, same place. It'll be right here. I think tomorrow we'll use more bays and the training will be a little more disconnected. It'll be half the time with me, half with Joel. Today it'll be most everybody right here. Uh, and we'll, I, yeah, I don't, I think we'll just break midday for lunch. Uh, how much ammo did everybody bring? Was it a thousand? Two. All right, that's not a bad thing to bring more. You expect to use about 600 rounds today. Uh, it'll be a lot this morning, so don't don't freak out. Uh, that's kind of part of the plan. The uh, the rate of consumption will slow down a lot uh, once we get to this afternoon. Anything else with safety stuff? Uh, oh, we're talking about safety. So yeah, I guess safety. I guess we'll talk about the boring stuff. Safety. Think about it as hot range, cold range. We're using basically USPSA safety rules. So we're on the line, you get the make ready command. That's everyone to go ahead and load your gun if you need to mess around with your dot, whatever. Uh, then we'll, while we're all shooting, you just stay hot the whole time. We do not want you to unload your gun after each rep. That just wastes time and it's a pain for you guys to be like trying to pick up rounds off the ground, all that garbage. So while the line's hot, just after the, uh, the rep for that drill is done, just load your gun back up if you need to, stay hot, and just plan on doing the drill again, another repetition. That way you're always ready. When you get done and we're make, the range going cold, we'll have everyone unload together, just awareness, make sure everyone's unloaded, then we can all walk down and pack the targets together. Anything else? Is there any weird? Uh, nope, it's nope. so just my name's Scott, I'm the, the facilitator today. So at 12, there's lunch provided in the chapter house. This is on tap of our club members meeting and I did confirm, so hamburgers, hot dogs, whatever. So at 12, you can go down and eat. If you're an Ike's member, please vote. Uh, we got to keep uh, control of the board so we can control the money. Um, other all than the that, uh, there's ice water in the cooler. If it starts to get low, throw more in. That'll be all weekend. Um, you saw the Kaibos. If you need a real bathroom, uh, the chapter house is open today. If it's not, let me know and I'll get you in. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you need anything, there's pacers and stuff. If it's not on the tables, it's in the locker. And the last thing for safety, if you're going to handle your gun, this, the side berms are okay to like, you know, take your gun out, like bag it or practice your draws, whatever. If you're going to be messing around with your gun or anything else, just go to one of the safe areas. We just don't want you handling guns to the back of the, the bay while people are downrange. All right. Okay. Cool. Get to it. Man, you really explained how boards work. He's on the USPSA board, by the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> you need to control the boards and control the money.
Right. Scott understands. You're definitely going on YouTube. <laughs> Not my first rodeo. More like a samurai. More like a samurai. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make an example for you. The first drill we're going to do. We're going to start with marksmanship fundamentals. And uh, yeah. So as you can see there, I drew the gun and I fired four pairs of shots. Okay, everybody understands that? About how fast was I shooting as far as the splits? 0.2. Yeah, so for most people say, yeah, about as fast as you can pull the trigger is kind of what we're looking for. So the idea is you're gonna look at a small spot on the target, draw the gun, and then shoot very aggressive pairs uh, on, onto that spot. Now for this, this is not a performance exercise, so you're shooting C's or D's or anything like that's not that's not going to upset us what we want is that you shoot the gun in a you know an aggressive a practical speed that probably makes you uncomfortable shoot the gun quickly and then see how see what happens see see how things move around so I'll make a, I'll make a couple examples for you here This probably looks more like it will with when most of you do this. Did anybody see which shots went where? Second, second shot. shot. Second right. Right. Yeah, so first shot in the group, second shot up here, third shot, fourth shot, then what happened? Yeah, then things started going down. So that's that's an example that's it's probably gonna look more like that for most of you. So what happened in that case is we draw the gun looking at a spot. Okay, then I start staring at the red dot, fire a pair, then the second shot goes away, goes up and away instead of being returned to where I'm looking because I'm looking at the red dot, in fact. I did that for a couple of repetitions. Then what most, you know, a lot of people, if they catch themselves doing that, they'll change their behavior, they change what they're doing. And in that case, I start being like, oh, that second shot's getting away from me. I'm gonna push down now to make sure that that doesn't happen, right? So that sort of thing, like, some piece of that, some element of that. That's the type of stuff that, that we're looking to have happen when you're shooting this exercise. Like we want this to happen. And then what we want is when you say, yep, I see that happen, I feel that happen, whatever. Instead of just normally, for, normally in people's training, if they're shooting hits they don't like, what do they do if, they're, if you're getting hits you're not happy with? Slow down. Slow down, yeah, exactly. So if you slow down, those same mistakes aren't gonna happen. Right. You probably do something else, but when you slow down your shooting, the mistakes aren't going to be the same. Your behavior is not going to be the same. So for this, we're going to make you shoot a lot, like quickly, and slowing down is not really on the menu. In instead, if you're shooting, if you're shooting and the hits look like this, and Joel comes over and says, "Hey, did you did you see that happen? Did you feel that or whatever?" If you say, "Hey, no, I didn't," that's okay. We just want you to keep shooting aggressively until you connect cause with effect, until you start to see that happen. Makes sense to everyone. The other thing that was really important when Ben shot, notice he fired a pair and then he stopped shooting. He paused, the gun quieted down where it wasn't bouncing anymore. Then he fired another pair, as opposed to it sounding like a filter. It's like pop, 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 pop. The pause in between it's really important. To let the gun calm down. Yep. Okay, so what you're going to want to pay to pay attention to on this is it's effectively two elements vision. I want you to look at a small spot on the target, not stare at your sight but look where you want the bullets to go. That's easy to, exp to tell you, it's hard to do. We'll talk more about it. The other thing to focus on is your grip. And we'll focus on that a lot uh, up at the, the first line here. Uh, most people in terms of their grip position, it's gonna look something like this, right? Their hand position, maybe like this, maybe like this, but it'll be basically some variation of this. Uh, I think for both of us, we don't think the position of the hands is that interesting of a question. I think the pressure 
is a very interesting question, like how hard you're holding the gun. Now, with your firing hand, we want you to hold the gun, I think firmly is the, be the best word I can come up with, meaning I'm gonna grip the gun so it doesn't move around in my hand under recoil, and anything else is, is not really needed. So for most people, that feels, it feels like you're holding the gun firmly. A lot of experienced shooters that are used to like gripping the gun as hard as they can, in their brains, if holding the gun I, the way I am, that's gonna feel weird. It'll feel too loose. Um, however, if you hold the gun so that it doesn't slide around inside your hand, that's gonna be enough. So I wanna hold with my firing hand, have some tension in my forearm so I, my wrists are locked. So I don't have a pivot point like this when the gun's recoiling, it's gonna be like this. Okay, so just hold the gun with my support hand, wrap that around, and I can grip harder with this one, I can crush the gun, especially into the grip panel. I wanna make sure I clamp onto that. So again, so the gun's not moving around inside my hand. Ben just made that sound really, really simple. It's, it's gonna be really tough to do. That's hard. To draw your attention to probably the toughest part is separating the two tensions. So having one hand just hold the gun and the other hand crush the gun, it's going to be really tough to do. Normally when somebody like, they want to clamp down with their support hand, their firing hand clamps down too. When they want to relax their firing hand, their support hand relaxes too. So it'll be a struggle, yeah. Are you holding it strong enough with your strong hand that you would actually be able to fire the gun one-handed or are you holding Absolutely. it like? Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's like, it's a very firm pressure. Okay. But at the same time, You'll have people hold it with that much pressure and then in their brains, they're not they're not doing enough. Okay. How about this is the way to think about it. You wanna be able to press the trigger without having sympathetic movement from the rest of your hand. So if you watch sometimes like from the side, you'll see people like their their thumb will be moving when they're pressing the trigger or some, some variation of that or their whole hand flexing because they're not pressing the, the trigger with just their trigger finger. Some variation of their hand flexing or pushing into it, which causes a lot of problems we don't want. Yeah, uh, so you want to grip the gun. I mean, after after we shoot enough, you'll be able to articulate it yourself what you want. But you're gonna hold the gun with your firing hand, you know, a little more support with the support hand, and then you shoot, and then nothing changes. So the the hardest thing I think for people to get is that your grip needs to be durable. It needs to be consistent. Most of the times, you draw your gun, you start shooting. Is your grip gonna change? Yes or no? Yeah. For most people, it changes. Most people, they're gonna start clamping down more with their firing hand. A lot of times their support hand just kind of leaves the exercise. And we want you to be keyed in on that and kind of experience what's changing. Like most people are not gonna be the same first shot to last shot. Again, I said, we were talking earlier about the drills, like what we're assessing. We don't care about the draw and how long it takes you. I think a really good checklist in your brain, we you draw the gun is think like, hold the gun, crush the gun, like kind of go through that checklist of however, like get the pressure set Take whatever time you need to draw, then start shooting. But if you need that little bit of pause to make sure you have the position and the pressures you like, you don't don't feel like you just have to like whip the gun out and just start sending it because that's probably not going to be good for like ingraining the pressures you want to use. And we're going to shoot a lot of rounds on this drill, so we'll shoot from every line we have here. So like you'll get four chances to do it, and we'll be you know backing up and try to shoot aggressively the whole time. What we want at the end of it. Again, it isn't that you have a pretty group in the center of the target. It's that you you understand how you're getting to what you're getting to. So you'd be like, yep, I feel my hand flex there. It's like, oh, yep, I see the you know, that shot goes away while I'm staring at the red dot, whatever it is. We just want you to be aware of what you're doing. You give it a try? Sounds amazing. All right, let's give it a try. Go figure. Uh, I'm learning time. There he is. <laughs> All right, folks, we put down these black pastries in the target. These are going to serve as you looking. This is the spot we want you to look at on the target. Now, does it matter if the target is five yards away or 20 yards away as far as driving your attention to a small spot? No, I mean, you all say that, but I think it's very normal. If you go to a USPSA match, let's see, we got three targets at five yards like this. Most people are probably going to look just at the color brown and then shoot rounds into brown, right? I mean, that's not like the best thing to do, but that is what you actually see people do. We do want to build the habit of you look into a small spot like this. You'll feel slower probably, but you won't really be slower. It's just a matter of, hey, I want to hit here. Your shots are going to go, you know, more cluster like this. If you just look at the whole shape or color of the target, you're going to tend to hit that.
the tire shape or color. Uh, now we want you to focus on this spot here, not focus on your sight or stare at your gun, which again, that sounds easy to do. How many of you occasionally look at your, look at your sight instead of the target? Anybody? That's good. We should see every hand. The other half are lying. Yeah, <laughs> deluded or dishonest. <laughs> or or deluded. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Delusional. It's kind of like trigger control. It's like it's not a thing you ever can stop working on. You, you're always through your shooting career. You're going to have to work on the concept of pulling the trigger and not moving anything. Same as focusing where you want the bullets to go. The faster, the more aggressively you start shooting, the more busy your sight moves, and the more it sucks your attention onto the sight. So, uh, can you touch on a clue to dot to help with We this? will, yes. So there's a few tools you can use to get your eye off of your sight and instead focus on the target. The first thing is this, these aiming references. Now, will these make you shoot better? Yes or no? Yes, they, will. they actually will. So if we put down an aiming reference on here, those are gonna suck bullets into them. It's kind of a crutch. It'll get you a better result, but that's not why it's up there. For us, we just want to give you that spot, and then you'll see how much better your shooting is when you have a very apparent spot to look at. And hopefully that'll highlight for you, it's like, oh, it's better to look at a spot on the target. Uh, the other thing you could do is play around with the brightness of your dot. Turn it down lower, turn it up higher. They, when you play around with it, you're gonna notice that it's more apparent sometimes and less apparent other times. It just makes it easier to not focus on the dot. And a lot of times strange things happen. So some guys turn it down really low and they end up focusing on it more because it's hard to see. So they start staring at it or they turn it up and they start staring at it more, whatever. It's like you want to work with that so you understand what you're doing. And then of course, occluding the dot, which will be taping over the front of the glass. How many of you have done that? If you've ever tried it? Yeah, most of you. If you've never tried it, you should try it. We might occlude some of your dots anyway. Uh, that's a that's a good tool that is as soon as I'm staring at the red dot instead of staring at the target The tape shuts down my view of the target. So it gives me an indicator that like, yep I'm actually staring at the site when I need to be looking where I want the bullets to go Okay, the other thing I want to call your attention to is your shot calling is going to be better If you're focused on the spot on the target as opposed to so focusing on your site meaning you will know where your bullets went with more accuracy if you're focused on the target instead of the site. Does that make sense? Does, so for instance, does that sound no, strange? No. That has to sound strange. For instance, while I'm shooting, if I shift my vision to my dot, the target behind it's going to be blurry. So it's going to, as long as I see, like I still see brown behind my dot here, it looks good to send it. So as opposed to keep looking at the spot you want to hit. So again, your vision's really important, focusing where you want the bullets to go. So I'll tell you something that a lot of you are gonna experience. You'll come down here, and there'll be some high hits on the target that you didn't, you weren't aware of. If you're having hits go up high and you're not aware of it, we'll say to you, yeah, you're probably staring at your sight, all right? But what's gonna get you is that you weren't aware of it. So what's happening is you look at the black spot, bring the sight up, you see the dot and you're like, yep, cool. Then you start staring at the red dot and you just register brown behind it. And you fire a pair of shots and you're like, yeah, it's good. I mean, you register brown behind the red and then you shoot again. And when you come down here, there'll be hits that are up high because you're actually staring at the red thing dancing and it sends your hits up into that cone. Does that make sense? So it's like if if your shot calling is not it is not accurate, you're probably looking at the site instead of the target. If you look at the target, so like if I'm staring at this black spot and I see red dot over here, way deep into the C zone and I pull the trigger, what will I register that as? Come on. So I would register, I would see like, yeah, that's way off the center. Does that make sense? And a lot of times you'll read it as worse than it actually was. Have you, any of you experienced this with red dots? Like you call it, you call the shot way more dramatically than it actually is. That means you're focused on the target, not focused on the site. And that's a good thing. Okay. So that's what's difficult for people is if they start actually focusing on the target like they're supposed to, the sight seems so much more dramatic to them, the way it's moving, and it's just just shooting more and paying attention. You'll uh, you'll start to understand what it's supposed to look like. 
Another good concept here to pay attention to is the difference between focus and awareness. So we want you to focus on the spot here, but be aware of how your sight's moving, which sounds sort of like competing efforts, right? Okay, well, I'll explain it to you like this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Joel, I know, I'm sorry. Like, but are you really sorry though? A little bit, yeah, because <laughs> you seem like a nice person. Continue. But, all right, so best example I can give a bunch of dudes is like, the difference between focus and awareness is like, I'm seated across from my wife at dinner, and I'm focused on her, right? Eye contact, that's my focal point. Then if you have a chick from like, let's say Scottsdale in the background, tight yoga pants, the big fake hoodies, all the upgrades, all that, and she's in the background doing stuff, and my focus is here. If my focus drifts, if my eyes leave, and they go to something in the background, then your wife's gonna turn around like that, and you've got a whole nother set of problems, right? <laughs> But this is kind of the same thing, right? So your focus is on this, right? And you're going to be aware that your sight is moving in relation to this spot. But as soon as you start staring at the sight, it makes your shooting a lot worse. It's nothing but problems. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? So that's the difference. So you're going to be focused here, but we're asking you to be aware of what the sight is doing the whole time. You're like, I'm lasered on this spot. I see the sight dance, then it goes off to the left, then it goes back up to here. I should know, yeah, I got a round off to the left. I should know that. Sound good? A couple, oh, okay. a couple common issues we had. It was a bit rhetorical. If I asked you if that was as fast as you could like pull the trigger while you're shooting the target, I already knew the answer. I was just gonna see if you were being honest or not. Uh, when you're doing this drill, you should be pulling the trigger absolutely as fast as you can. Everyone could slow down and be like, bang, 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 you know, and like have a nice relaxed speed and stacks of shots. That's not what we want. We want you to train for where you wanna be. So it's got to be as fast you can pull the trigger. The other thing, notice some of you, especially on the draw, like if your name's Scott, um, I mean, this is a thing that could happen to you hypothetically. Off the draw, having trigger freeze, so your hand like kind of clamps down, you can't quite release it, go bang, and you're like, and you gotta like release the trigger. That's a common thing that can happen when you want to go fast. So it's really important to keep your hand relaxed. But if you're getting that trigger freeze, the fix is just relax your firing hand. Coop? Yeah. Okay, let's go to the red okay. line. Uh, just a quick question for bringing us iron sight guys in that don't have electronics. Uh, it's it's going to be the same. Same thing with uh, sight focus as far as are you just trusting your grip and no. aware of your fiber or are you still aware this, of your front and rear sight this is good while to talk you're about. on the target? So you're, so you're going to be aware of the front and rear sight but neither of them should be clear. Still focus on the target. Uh -huh. it's, not, it's not focused and sharp where you're seeing the, uh, like the alignment but you're still aware you can still see them they're peripherally right they're blurry you can still see where the front side and the rear notch are it's For just me, not I, sharp i shoot focus. 50 yards target focus with irons okay so the iron sights are always blurry okay. always i mean i use them they're just blurry okay got it that's hard for people to wrap their heads around that's why i want to deep guy yeah. all right um we'll do a quick little one shot awareness drill this isn't a performance thing we don't care how good you shoot it's just to understand returning the gun to where you want to return it to. Uh, watch the, the muzzle of my gun, if you would. I'm going to start aimed, aimed in at the black spot. Every time I hear the beep, I'm going to fire that shot and then return the gun to the black spot. So I'll do it a few different ways. Again, just watch the muzzle. Stand by. I did a few different versions there. Now we're not even assess like I said, we're not assessing where those bullets went. We don't really care. What did you see from the, the gun movement? I did a few different things, right? So what we want, I started and stopped this way, by the way, is I'm looking where I want, I shoot that shot and the gun, the gun recoils and comes right back to where I'm looking. It's like, boom, it's very immediate. For my perception is I'm looking at that spot. I fire and as soon as I'm done firing, as soon as I see the gun, recoil it cycles and it's right back to where i'm looking that's what we want um how much effort do you think that is or how much work is it to make your gun go from here to here minimal yes and that's what you should get highlighted from this if you feel like you're fighting a lot with the gun you're probably doing too much 
And that's why you see a lot of the low hits on these targets is that people, they like push down into the gun to make that happen. Uh, so yeah, doing this correctly, you'll fire it. It's very immediate that you, that you, you know, you'll push the gun a little bit, but it's not very much. You shouldn't feel like you're fighting a whole lot. Now you saw me do it wrong in the sense that I pushed down and I see the sight go below that black spot. If you're shooting here, shooting at either doubles drill or doing this, this drill, should you see the sight go below that black spot? Probably, yeah. we're pretty far back. Well, I should we, know. no, we shouldn't, ideally no. I mean, I'm not talking like it goes an inch down, I mean like, but substantially below okay. there, that should not happen. It's like we should shoot and like, again, if I'm running the doubles from back here, It'll be like, I'm staring at the black spot and I just see this red thing bouncing off of it, but never below, okay? Uh, so you saw where I pushed down below and then you saw where I didn't return the gun aggressively or immediately. So I'd shoot and then just let the gun come back really slowly. That obviously is a no-go as well. That's not, that's not realistic to how fast you need to shoot. But anyway, we wanna just try this and it should make the point for you really quickly where it's like, oh, I need to, it's not much force I put into the gun to return it, and I shouldn't feel like I'm working that hard to do it. It's just very immediate. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. One other thing we should talk about, oh. the second shot, Ben. Yes. Uh, we're call, we call this predictive shooting. The reason being with training and experience, notice you can predict where the second shot is likely to go. We had some conversation about the second shot. If you're, if you're aiming, if you, you, make, you see where the dot goes, then you make a decision to shoot. I think a fair way to say this is you're already committed to the pair so you're already like i'm gonna shoot a fast pair you know like fast i can pull the trigger i'll be aware of where the second shot goes maybe i see the dot flicker one way or my front sight do something but i'm not making a decision while that shot's being fired it's happening too fast so i'm not making a decision but i'm aware of what happens basically no nobody is consciously fast enough to make a conscious choice to fire each one of these shots individually at the speed we're shooting now, so this is a training tool for us. Uh, you'll understand, hey, at what distance can I do this? Um, and then for other shots, you'd be reacting to the site for every shot. We call that reactive shooting. Okay. But for real, like real talk, the major, like this shooting, this this scheme of predictive shooting, how much do you use this in matches? All the time. A lot. All the time. Like a majority of the shooting, right? That's why this is really important. Okay. Okay. Cool. The other end. Let's yeah, talk a little bit. All right, so we're gonna, we want you to look at the big picture, not so much just the A and C count, but really look at the position of the hits. Let's take a look at this target here. What do we think is going wrong? Pushing on the gun, right. What do we think is going on on this target? Not enough forehand pressure. Maybe, it, maybe that's responsible for the head hits, definitely pushing the gun as well. If it's not the support hand pressure for the head hits, it'd be a focal thing, right? Staring at where you want the gun to return to. Now, as you look, not just at your target, but look at everyone's target up and down the line, do you notice how pretty much all of the targets have some variation of this going on? It's happening to some degree. Yeah, so that's what we notice. It's pretty much everybody's gonna do the same thing, is either you're gonna move the, move the gun when you pull the trigger. So for a right-handed shooter, go left and low or you're not returning the gun to where it needs to be and those hits slip high. That's normal. The thing that we need is like, if this is your target, you should be feeling and seeing this happen. Like how many of you walk down here and you're surprised? That's good. Like, no, you should be honest about it. Yeah, I am surprised. Like, I don't understand what's happening here. That's a good thing, right? Most, like a lot of you guys should look at this and be like, yep, I, like, I didn't see or feel that happen or whatever. And, and then the next line we go back to, it's only gonna get worse as we go, right? So it's, your goal should be to perceive what's happening rather than try to shoot a really pretty group. Because if we, you shoot a pretty group, we're just gonna tell you to go faster anyway. We want you to actually understand what's happening here. Anything to add? No. no All good. right, let's uh, pace these up. All right, we just did that aggressive, we call it predictive shooting. Now, how many of you got to a point at like somewhere where you're like, yeah, I wouldn't do this in a match anymore at this distance? Yeah, hope, hopefully just about everyone. 
Yeah, that's part of the that's the idea. So you're going to shoot way beyond what you realistically could do. However, it gives you a good sense of awareness and control. So when now we're going to shoot a more realistic speed, high you know high accountability. So now we actually want to make sure all the rounds go in the center. Anyway, Mr. Park. Okay. Uh, I'm going to shoot the drill a couple different ways. Just watch the gun and the pacing of the shooting, please. That'll be the part we'll be talking about. the difference between the two second, slower, second, second one was pretty lame right yeah. so the first one looked like a bouncing ball every time that the gun came back down or the dot came back down i was pressing the trigger the second example when it came back down i sat on it for a while looked at it like yup looks good now i'll start pressing the trigger that's not what we're gonna do so like ben said we just did predictive shooting so with training and experience you could grip the gun properly and predict where the shots are going to go call this reactive shooting, which means I react to each sight picture and I have a high amount of accountability for where the bullets go. The drill is, as you saw here, just shooting six shots at the pace of my sights. And, uh, you know, ideally, you should be stacking shots. We should see a lot better group. Bad things will happen the same way like they did with the previous group. So if your firing hand starts to clamp down, you see you push shots uh, low and left, or if you switch your vision onto your sight, it might go high, uh, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna shoot one more time. Okay. I'll do, uh, this will be somebody here, or a handful of people here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happened? I was shooting at the proper speed, I pushed into one, and I'm like, oh no! All right, slow down then, and then I slowed down and tried to shoot really nice again. Oh, all right. Honestly. Thank you. So, uh... I won't be upset if I see you do that. No, no, no. Like, just like the previous drill, where I could be like, Ben, you are a terrible person. You just fired a Delta. The whole thing is cause and effect, just like with the previous drill. So you make a mistake, the pacing does not change. Regardless if you're a, a national world, world champion level guy, or if you're D-class or unclassified, the pace is the same. You're just reacting at the pace of your sights. So as soon as your sight, your front, front sight or dot, whichever, comes back down, I'm pressing the trigger. Non-negotiable, regardless of as we move back. Is that anything else to add to that? Does everybody understand this? So what shots would you shoot this way in a match? Penalty targets, hard cover. Yeah, yeah, anything, anything high, high shot. higher risk, high, longer distance, anything like that, it'll be sight press, sight press. So are you seeing a flash of red or are you seeing the round shot? I would say, I would say, see your sight a second time. How you do that is to you. I do. I think it needs to be a round dot, stop and stable. No. Does that change on the distance? It, it will eventually. Not, a, not, not here. here. Not for what we've got set up. No. It wouldn't for me. So just like the previous drill, really putting your focus on your hands and the feeling in your hand. You want that same grip where you hold the gun, crush the gun, and then keeping that tension the entire drill. So not getting more tension or less tension or relaxing your hands, anything like that. The grip, the dr you want to draw to the correct grip pressure and hold that pressure the entirety of the six shots. Okay. Okay. Do a relaxed. fun and exciting drill. Just use the timer. Okay. Got you. Okay, so you can see you've got some pattern developing on your target. All right. Watch, uh, watch my gun here as I do this. So I'm going to start looking at that, looking at the black spot. The sight will be superimposed over it. Finger in the trigger guard, but not touching the trigger. Go ahead, Joel. Stand by. Stand by. So you should be able to see when it's right and when it's wrong. Yeah. Go ahead and put some live ammo to it. Use live ammo now. We'll do this variation as well. Stand by.
Honestly, as soon as I hear that beep, I'm going to shoot that shot, like straight away. And my finger starting off of the trigger, that makes things quite a lot harder. So, go ahead, Joel. Well, a couple things to talk about. Notice when Ben did the drill, as soon as he heard like the beep, like the buh part of the beep, he started smashing through the trigger. Anyone could go really slow, like you hear the beep, and then it's like, like, okay, great. That was really neat. But, you know, like, <laughs> when you want to be fast and accurate, when the dot gets to where you want, you're like, okay, I want to go now. Or in this previous drill, notice it was a common thing that happened where we saw lots of the low and left thing happening. What that is, is your dot gets to where you want, you make a decision like, yep, now's the time to fire, and then you crank on your hand or push into the shot. So the important part of doing this drill is when you hear the beep, like the buh, it's like now, as soon as you hear it, Ben's immediately on the trigger. Like Ben said, changing your finger position on this drill makes a big difference also. So if I have my finger way out of the trigger guard, or if I have my finger up in contact with the trigger, in my experience, the farther you get your finger away from the trigger, the tougher the drill becomes. And I like practicing this drill in dry fire with all the different positions where I have my finger contacting the trigger way forward, far away in the, the very front of the trigger guard, you know, and everywhere in between. A good way to think about this is when you start doing this initially, you should see the same pattern from your sight that you see on your target. So if you've got, you know, your aiming reference and a bunch of stuff low or a bunch of stuff left, initially you should see your sight flick to the left or flick down. Why? It's you're reducing that in the gun. Right, so we know you're doing that, so we're gonna set the conditions for your training so you, we're recreating that problem, and then you can work through it. What, what people really commonly wanna do is they wanna slow everything down and then get a result that they like, rather than make the training realistic. How about this for a hot take? If we do this drill initially, when we look at your target, if you do this drill initially and you're really happy with the results, you're doing the drill wrong. Definitely. You should be, <laughs> disappointed at least initially with how it looks because you should be replicating those issues that you're seeing when you're firing ammo and that's how you're going to work through them like with the previous drills where you put your attention I think is very important so we do this drill putting your attention on your firing hand think like hey dummy just press the trigger straight back don't push into the gun just really focusing on that part of a uh, part of your grip part of your firing hand is very beneficial yeah anything else no, I don't think so. Okay, so we'll do the drill dry, and then we'll do the one-shot drill also. Let's get uh, what? We're going to talk a little bit about trigger control and why we've done drills in this order. So I think Joel and I do it the same way. For me, it doesn't matter if the trigger's in double action mode, single action mode, if it's a striker-fired Glock, whatever. All I'm going to do is take pressure and stack it up onto the trigger. One, two, three, four, five, six pounds like that. What's going to change? is how aggressively I do that based on the distance to the target. So if the target's five yards away, I'll, I'll roll the pressure on just like this, where it's like a, a continuous motion. If the target's at 50 yards, it'll look like this. You see anything different? It's a little pause right at the end. Not a pause, but it's like, yeah, I'm just rolling back in. I, I try specifically not to stack up the pressure, stop, and then get it going again. I think that's very difficult to uh, prep and press in that way, especially with the double action guns. Um, but you, you do it the same way. Absolutely, regardless of what gun it is, double single, yeah. like if it's a, a polymer frame gun, whether it's the Walther Glock, whatever, it's the same deal. Like I just start stacking pressure, stacking pressure, and someday before the sun goes down, the trigger, like if the gun fires. And then like what Ben said, the distance for that, if the target's up close, that I roll on that pressure very quickly, the target's farther away, or I perceive it to be a more difficult target. Maybe I roll on that pressure more slowly or more deliberately but it's the same process yeah i think that's the easiest way to do it uh, especially from a training perspective like you'll make sure your finger pops off the trigger so it'll definitely reset if you try to ride the reset point of the trigger sometimes that works but a lot of times that causes problems so that's why like i don't i don't like doing that at all uh anyway we're gonna do a quick group shooting exercise so if we can get everybody to stand up on the line we're not going to shoot around yet you just have to hold your gun up for about a minute. It feel like a long time. All right, gentlemen, before you go to lunch, let's talk through what we did here. You don't have to patch your target anymore. You don't have to paste it. We're going to get rid of it. All right, so just a few simple concepts this morning. Let's talk about what we did today. 
<laughs> Basically, everything was focused on your vision, where you were looking, and gripping the gun properly in one way or another, yeah? I mean, probably by now, everyone has a change that they'd like to make or something to work on. Mm -hmm. So the first drill, we started rapid fire with the gun really kicking around a lot in your hand, and then we kept moving it, so there's like more and more accountability, and then you get more and more sensitive to just the little inputs, what they do on the targets, right? Yeah. Um, and then what, dry fire drills to, to work through those issues? Yeah, so I wanna point out a couple things. So we started shooting fast, by the end we just did slow fire shooting. How many of you found that easy? Yeah, it's pretty easy towards the end, I would say. Um, and you can see why it's like, we don't want to really train that way. That's just a check to make sure, yeah, you can shoot a really small group given no time limit. Um, when we were shooting faster, you were starting to see what's actually happening when you shoot aggressively. Over tension on one hand, you know, hand position inconsistent, whatever. Now, how many of you had a problem on the visual side? Should be pretty much everyone, right? Yeah, yeah it's like, it is easy to say, yeah, focus on a spot on the target. That's easy to say. It's really hard to do, especially the more attention you pay, you'll see your eye gets caught by the sight, starts moving your hits around, and then you're not, I mean, we had to shoot, what, three, 400 rounds before a lot of you could even see what was happening. Is that fair? I'd say that's very normal. This is a process, you just gotta go through it, where you're shooting the gun at, I'd say, a realistic speed, and then paying attention to what's happening. Like you, you just have to go through the process, paying attention to what's going on, and then that's that awareness that you build is how you're going to improve. What you want to take away from this is a sense of this is how I should be holding my gun, whatever that is. A lot of you will change the pressure in your hands, that kind of thing. But you want to sense for how to how to hold the gun, and then you want to understand what target focus really feels like. You know, actually focusing on a small spot on a target. And it'd be easy to practice that stuff dry. Okay you should practice that dry. And then that way you don't have to think about it that much. When you come out and you do training on more complicated things, you don't want to be thinking about your grip. Minus the group shooting, the first two drills we did, the reactive and the predictive shooting, of the ammo I shoot in a year, that'll be half the rounds I fire. I think the same is true of then. Yep. So just those, that's why we shot up a lot of ammo, or maybe you know over half your ammo, just in those couple drills. Because that's really like, if I'm going out to train, Normally it'll be one of these drills. Like when I switch guns, like when I switched to a Walther, my first four, five, six range trips, all I did was just shoot these two drills. That's it. Yeah. One target, just trying to grip the gun properly and trying to shoot it straight. So I, these drills are really important. I would say also when, when we're spending ammo on this, this is the one thing you can't practice dry. Is that true? Like just, shoot, like just feeling the gun recoiling like that and shooting aggressively, you, you're not going to get that feeling dry fire. So you've got to spend some spend some ammo on this. Learn what you want your grip to be. Pay attention to what your eyes are doing. It's not usually what you want. And then you can inform yourself like what you want your dry fire to look like. I would recommend follow on with these small spots. You know, get yourself to drive your out of small spots during your dry fire. If your gun's occluded and you're finding that helpful for your awareness, occlude your gun for dry fire. Do it for the whole winter. Why not? It's just going to help you improve. Okay. Yes, sir. What's Walter is uh, dry to live fire ratio? My, mine's pretty weird. Uh, Ben's isn't normal. I, not normal. I dry fire, I don't know, probably, I don't even know what it'd be, 10 to 1, probably, something like that. Like, yeah. I dry fire way more. It used to be 10 to 1 for me, but it's, I shoot a lot more. Maybe it's 8 to 1, enough. something like that. Because think about it, for most people, I work, a, I work normally like a square job. You get home, you're done with work for the day. Maybe I don't have enough time to go to the range that night or ammo is expensive, mm -hmm. as you all know. Well, you know, unless you get ammo from work or something. So by the time you, you know, it's costs a lot of money, it's cheaper to dry fire and it's something that I can just pick up and we'll have a talk tomorrow and talk about that. But that's something I could work on every day for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. Yeah. So the frequency. Basically these serious guys are gonna dry fire every day, I think. This is also a really good way. So the ammo way is kind of like a way to check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Yeah. So you have the grip, you're like, yep, I'm gripping the gun properly. I've got the right tension. I'm doing all the stuff right. You come to the range, you shoot ammo, you gain observations. Oh, holy crap. Apparently I wasn't hanging onto the gun at all. I really am pushing into the gun that I didn't realize. Then you could take that information back to dry fire, work on drawing to the grip you like, getting the right pressures you like. When you think you've made a change or you feel like it's going in a positive way, 
come back out, shoot more ammo, assess, better or worse, something else happened, then you go back to dry fire and work on making whatever change you want to make. So it's always going to bounce back and forth. All right, uh, I think we're gonna do how long for lunch? About an hour. So what's the food situation? So lunch is up in the chopper house for you for this next exercise and then we'll, we'll have plenty to talk about. So what differences did you note there between those two runs? Tension. A lot of tension in the first one. Yeah, I exaggerated a lot the first one. So uh, what, what we're doing here, you're going to shoot the close target, six rounds on this guy. Look at a spot, gun comes up. Now we just did before lunch predictive shooting and reactive shooting. What do you think is appropriate for somebody to do here in terms of how, how aggressively they can shoot this target? Predictive as best you can. Yeah, so look at a spot on the target. I see my sight flashing there. It's like, yep, looks good. And I'll just start shooting as fast as I can pull the trigger. As long as my grip stays together and I don't drive down on the gun or stare at the red dot, they should just, the bullet should just stack up where I'm looking. Does that sound fair to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're shooting six shots on that close one, not just to waste ammo, but because it's a good opportunity to build up tension. So you can start staring at the dot. You can tense up your firing hand, tense up your shoulders. Whatever, there's a lot of things that you could do that would be counterproductive if you just manage to not do any of them. When you look at the target in the back, you'll look to it and the gun will just go to where you're looking without any drama or any nonsense. Uh, let me highlight this, make an example for you. I want you to watch how much the gun moves in recoil. I'm gonna get really low, aggressive. Does it look like I'm using a lot of effort here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. effort and the gun is moving some amount in recoil okay if i just relax everything hold the gun only with my hands and forearms look where i want to hit did you see much difference in the behavior of the gun no it's really not that much it's not that extreme okay so that's kind of the point here you're going to hold the gun just with your hands and your forearms any other tension you introduce into your body is going to be counterproductive so here to introduce just a little bit of a transition you know a little bit of gun movement some rapid fire that's why we set this up like this so if you can keep the tension out of your body and just look where you want the bullets to go that's going to be a good thing you bring the gun up you start staring at the red dot tensing up your hands in weird ways like that will be a problem does that make sense to everybody you might yeah. notice the black pasters are gone now yeah. But you still need to be looking at the target with the same level of detail like you would if they were there. So notice when Ben shoots, it's very apparent ben, ben was looking at the very middle of the target, like the letter A, where he wanted the bullets to go. So don't you can't be looking at the big brown target or just centering it somewhere on the target. Actually, it's, I can I can make an example of what it looks like to just look at brown. Oh, baby. What was I looking at? Brown, just the color brown and shooting. It's like inside of the targets, I had no real accountability for where they were going. Okay, do I like the time? Yeah, it was a fast time, but could I repeatably get a really good result doing that? No. You did that too well. Yeah, I mean, I had a good result that time, but it was like totally, I mean, I had no clue where they went. Just being honest, like no clue. And that's why it's, sedu it's seductive to, squirt bullets onto the brown as fast as you can do it enough that oh i got a time i like and i got hits i like that time like but that's not what we want for training okay cool let's do it okay folks we're going to talk about uh confirmation and i like that word more than aiming i'll show you what i mean in a second joel will give me a beep i'll start with the gun down at a 45 degree angle at the tone, I'm going to bring it up to the target I'm looking at. I'm going to see my dot look like a red dot, and then I'll pull the trigger. Stand by. Stand by.
by. Stand by. Okay, is the uh, accuracy acceptable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, is that really the word for it? For a USPSA setting, what would we say about this accuracy? Too good. It's overkill. Yeah. So seeing my red dot look like a dot on a spot I'm looking at is printing like an inch and a half through. Probably not really necessary. You know what the time was, Joel, before? 0. 0.9795. The other one was just over a second. All right, so, so call it roughly it takes, a second. It takes some time, whatever that is, about a second. All right. Now I'm going to cut down the confirmation. So this time I'll just react to a flash of red. Stand by. Stand by. What was that time, Joel? Six five, roughly. Okay, so the point here is I can react to something like just a flash of the color, and I can get hits that are more than acceptable. Is that fair? Yeah. All right. So the point here is. What you're gonna change, like probably the one thing that changes as you go through stages and shoot, like what controls how fast you go is gonna be the level of confirmation that you use on each target. You can have your sight, like be the textbook sight picture, equal height, equal light, iron sights, or dot, red dot stop stable looks like a dot, or you could say red dot just looks like a dot. Front sight through the rear without respect for alignment, just the color of the front sight, just the color of the dot, you see that react to it. So there's a bunch of different options here. And so think, think like this, if the target's 50 yards away, I'm gonna draw the same and I just get more confirmation. And then in between positions, I'm gonna run, right? Really aggressively. And the only thing that I'm gonna change is what am I looking for off the sights before I shoot? Everything else is gonna get done as fast as I can do it. Does that make sense to everybody? So we're gonna go through confirm this, this drill, just like we did, we'll shoot the back target then the close target. Um, get just the sight picture comfortable within the back like a traditional sight picture, and then up close, just the flash of color off your sight. I think the takeaway for most of you on this will be just the flash of color is what you wanna do most of the time in USPSA. The targets are, I don't know, inside of 10, 12 yards. That's the way to do it, honestly. Does that make sense to everybody? Just a hot take, most people for the back target, everybody understands that and does that. Most people give up a lot of time on the closer targets where they can just be reacted in color for no reason. Like yeah. Ben showed you what he got for a result. Like people would think about adding that extra four tenths on every single one of those shots for nothing. That's what a lot of people do. Now, I'm just looking at the color of my sight. Why is this group so tight here? Target focus. Where you're looking. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at a very precise spot, but I'm reacting to something very gross. So it's like I'm staring at that spot and a flash of color anywhere around it that triggers me to pull the trigger right away. So that's like a yin and yang, it's like dueling forces. It feels like competing efforts, but it's really not. You always drive your attention to a small spot, then what you react to is what you change. Something to think about, what would the outcome be if Ben just looked at the brown target <laughs> and shot whenever he saw the color? Yeah. It would look like shotgun pattern. Exactly. Well, it should. The one demo I did staring at the target didn't go so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben has a good index, so that's yeah. not really fair. But yeah. uh, anyway, so it's it's important to understand. Otherwise, you'd just be giving up time. And again, looking at the spot is the ticket. Yeah. So should we give this a try? Sure. All right. Another fun and exciting drill. I don't know if it's that fun or that exciting, but it is a drill. All right. We uh, we talked about the confirmation or what aiming scheme you need. I want to talk about the transitioning the gun between the targets, the movement, and how that looks, and uh, I want you to watch, bad examples. I want you to watch Joel's gun here. The gun, not the target, not even really him, just the gun. You got a beef really so, he, so gun and vision will be on a target, at the tone, but he's gonna fire that shot, then shift his eyes to the other target, and the gun should go right with him. Now he's gonna do it right to begin with. Mm -hmm. Here we go, all right, Joel, oh. here we go. <coughs> Now, Joel, yeah, push it around. Try to do a really fast one. Yeah. 
And you can see, you can see definitely he was pushing the gun around. What he was seeing was the dot come in and slash all over the target. All right, so you might have somebody do that. Now back way off. To pull. You might have somebody do that, and then they'll end up doing this to stop doing it. How's that look? Slow. It's not realistic. Yeah. Now do it properly again, Joel. So you can see there, there's not a whole lot of drama. The gun just moves where it's supposed to. So what we want is, at the tone, you fire that shot, you shift your vision to where you want the gun to go, and the gun should follow you immediately. Why you don't want to stare at the sight and push it, or stare at the sight and then shoot and let it return very gently and then move it. It should be very immediate. When I tried to go fast, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna show these guys what's up. Like even spreading out wide, whatever I did, I always got inconsistent results. So sometimes it would swing on the target and be like, oh, it's just a little bit low that time. That's not so bad. Then the next time it'd be like, it'd swing way past, like bounce. Like it was different every single time. None of them were really the same. Right. What we'd like to see here is, is very precise movement of the gun. So you shoot and you look over here and the dot just drops down right to where you're looking. All right. So a good example or a, a good comparison here is that using a mouse pointer. So, do you stare at the mouse pointer while it goes around the screen? What do you look at? The icon, the, icon, the porn, whatever you're, yeah, whatever you're looking at. Where you want the pointer to go, that's what you look at. Right, now what if you want to click on something really fast? What do you do differently? Okay. That sound confusing? The way I just said that, like, that doesn't make sense in my brain either. I'm like, what do you mean click on it fast? I look at it, the pointer comes to me, I click. There is no faster. So, and that's how... Yeah, for me, it's like if I want to click on something fast, that that concept doesn't make sense to me either. Look at something, pointer comes to you, click on it. Do you think about whipping the mouse around the pad if you want to go faster? Is that going to make you faster? Probably not. Doesn't sound like it would. It's just going to make you imprecise. So transitioning the gun is the same as this. Look where you want to go. Don't try to push it around or make anything happen. It isn't really about the physical speed that you move the gun, that's not really important. Instead, you just very precisely and immediately move your eye from one spot to the next, okay? There's a couple things we'll be watching for, not just on this drill, but in other ones. Uh, if we're looking under your glasses, we wanna see your eyes hop from spot to spot, as opposed to smoothly roll. What are we looking for there? Make sure you're you're bringing the, bringing getting the your vision from one looking, front target to the other. Yeah, exactly. So if we see your eye goes hop, 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 you're going from spots out there from one spot to another. If your eye's rolling, that means you're tracking a moving object in front of you, which is going to be what? Your sight. Your sight. Exactly. So you don't, you don't track your sight. Okay, you look where you want to go. Uh, we'll be listening for you if you say something like, oh, man, I'm just trying to find the dot. Or, oh, yeah, I transitioned to here to here. I lost the dot. That's a key to me that you're staring at the red dot. Now let me explain. That normally you look where you want to hit and the gun comes up and the sight goes to where you're looking, right? Mm -hmm. If you're less experienced, when you draw the gun up, what are you going to be looking for? The dot. The dot. You're like, where's the fucking thing? There's that fucker. All right. And then you put it where you want it to go. That's not where you want to be, but that's what a lot of less experienced guys do. The same way if I go from one target here to another target over here, will I lose awareness of my sight? Yes, I not only will I, I should. I should. So if you have somebody saying like, oh man, I lost the dot when I go from here to here, it's like, well, yeah, that shouldn't be weird to you. And the fact that that's weird makes me think your shooting's fucked up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so pay attention to that. So you want to look where you want to go. The gun will follow you. The gun will come straight to you. Don't try to push it around. Don't try to force anything to happen. Just trust it's going to go to where you're looking. We don't want to be following the sight in between targets. We want to be looking where we want it to be. Same as you use a mouse pointer. Okay, should we give this little drill that Joel just demoed? Should we give it a try? Okay. We good? Yeah, you're happy. Okay, we're going to go back to that eight shot drill. So there's two little drills we did just with confirmation. So like, what are you looking for from the sight? And then with shooting, move your eyes, let the gun come to you. Normal target transition stuff. Were those easy concepts to understand? Yes, I think they're easy to understand. <coughs> Is that easy to do in the middle of a rapid fire string? Not always. 
<laughs> not always pro, maybe not ever. <laughs> All right, I want you to watch my gun as I shoot this. And watch my body language. I'll shoot it, I'll shoot it nice and aggressive. Decent run, yeah. All right, so my question for you is, watching me there, did you see me apply those two concepts we just did those drills about? It was too fast it's to tell. Too fast. Right, so it was like, that was like proper speed. And what I'd say is, what made it fast is that I was doing that stuff that we talked about. I'm like, looking where I wanna go, okay. And then it's all the stuff I didn't do. I didn't draw the gun and tense up, right? Did, did my body look tense? No, I'm just drawing the gun, gonna hold it with my hands and my forearms. I'm just looking at a spot on the target, waiting to see that flash of red. Okay, flash of red, then press, 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 press. Six shots, look to the target in the back. I'm not gonna tense up and try to throw the gun there. I just look at that spot and I know the gun will go there. Okay. Do it again. Again, watch how relaxed I am. Does that make sense? So you're watching that, you're like, yeah, it's, it doesn't look like much. It's just as you probably at this point in the day, you figured out it's very hard to do that, but it's, it's in a sense, you're letting yourself do it. Like, I'm just, I'm gonna shoot the way I know how without tensing up or trying really hard or trying to throw the gun around. That makes sense to everybody? So pay attention to those cues we talked about. Again, looking at a spot, apply the, the proper confirmation, when the gun goes from one target to the next, you just look where you want it to go. We've intentionally spaced the targets here just in depth. There's not even like a lateral movement of the gun. You just have to look at that spot. And once you get that down, then we'll start doing target transitions properly. Make sense? Anything to add here? Notice how relaxed Ben looked the whole time he did it. Yeah, so you see, you guys have all seen at least footage of top level shooters. They don't look like they're trying that hard. That's what's very frustrating. It's because they're cutting out all of that excess tension that pe in people's brains, if they're working harder, they think they're, they're gonna do better. It doesn't really work like that, of course. It's all the stuff where like firing hand or hands tense up, shoulders go up, like chest, all that stuff, like really trying to like get get tense or really hold on to the gun extra hard or use your whole body, all that stuff is just makes it way tougher. So you'll have your best result in this just being relaxed. If you look at Ben, I mean, he looks like just a normal guy other than the goofy haircut, just standing there relaxed just shooting you didn't see any part of his body trying to like tense up or be extra strong or do anything extra to control the recoil he just looked at the spot and bullets just showed up there being very relaxed which is tough to do when you're trying to shoot fast and aggressively yeah all right let's let's face let's go back to that uh this eight shot drill and we'll get after it um, so we've done just a little bit of target transition work we're going to expand on that now so let's think about the keys that we have here look where you want to go let the gun come to you and apply the correct confirmation on each target. Now I'll tell you this, for those of you that shoot competitively, which I think would be almost all of you, uh, one thing that I do in, during the walkthrough, I spend about half of my time figure, like looking at little spots on the targets. That's it. So I'll walk into the position I'm supposed to shoot. If I saw that, here. Okay. So half my time just looking at precise spots on the targets. Does that sound strange to you? Does that sound like the way you use, you, you use your time? How about to contrast that? Some people <laughs> just try to remember where the targets are. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, that's, okay. that's where most people are at if they're Maybe being honest. No one else has ever done this but me before. Yeah. I'll come, you're like, okay, there's four targets. Got it, okay, like four targets in the cone, okay. Like that's what goes in, like don't forget. That's, that's what most people do, is they look at an array or a group of targets, and they're like, these targets from here. And what you wanna to get to is where you don't have trouble memorizing a stage or figuring out how to shoot it. Usually there's only a couple choices you gotta make. It's not really usually that nuts, but you do wanna spend some time picking out little spots. And I'm just, just to highlight that, because um, I know that most, probably most shooters don't do that, but I definitely spend a lot of my time doing that. All right, so uh, I want to like I'm going to shoot these four targets. It'll be left to right or right to left. We don't really care. Just pick one of the two and do it. I'm going to just do dry rehearsals with my eyes. Grab a spot, 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 spot. Then I'll bring in my gun. I want you to watch how I use my gun here. 
Now, does that look like a realistic grip to you? Yeah. yeah. Did I pull the trigger? Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to pull the trigger or simulate the shots. All I'm going to do is when I see my sight on the target, so like I would shoot, instead of shooting, simulating shots, pulling anything like that, I'm just going to go to the next target. So think about it. It's like an aiming thing. Like I'm going to aim at one target, then the next, next, next. I just want to get a sight picture on each target as quick as I can. Sight, 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 sight. Okay. Now how about this? <laughs> what do we think there? Why is that bad? Didn't, didn't get a picture on these front two. Yeah, I did. I saw it. my dot on both of them. How about without Ben firing ammo? I have people ammo? say this shit to me like with a straight face. <laughs> without Ben firing ammo, it went hit, yes. hit, 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 and then it goes on to the next target. Right, so what I'm pointing out here is we're not just going to wave our gun through the targets. You can actually tell as a third party observer, you could be like, yes, you stopped on each target, you know, a side picture on each one versus no, you just wave the gun through the target. Yeah, we want to do the first thing. Okay, now I'm going to actually bring in the live ammo. First, I should say, does this look fast to anybody? Not really. really. It's really not. It doesn't look fast. Okay. But it's gonna be. <laughs> now watch my gun as I do it again. Was it fast that time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's a couple things to point out here that are key. Was I shooting fast enough for you on these close targets? It was not It was not exactly slow, I don't think. It was appropriate. Well, I mean, I just want to check the time. Yeah, how do I do this? I don't even know. Great salesman for that time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank trying you. to sell me no, one? You don't even know how it works? I'm not trying to sell you on anything. Yeah, you did. You yeah, it's like 20s, 20s on in between these. Like, so plenty mm -hmm. fast shooting here. Do you think I was looking at a small spot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So people think they can't do this fast. They definitely can. Now, on this partial target in the back, was that predictive shooting or reactive shooting? Reactive. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you could tell my gun went there. It was like, boom. The gun came back and stopped again. Boom. So it was dot press, dot press. All I did was look at the top of the A zone. When the gun went there, dot press, dot press. So you're seeing a few key things here. First, predictive shooting where possible, reactive shooting where appropriate, looking at small spots on the targets, okay? And then staying nice and loose and just trying to execute on that. Does this make sense to everybody? All right, so again, we want you to do the same thing I did here. When you come up, you look, pick out your spots, okay? Bring the gun in for some dry fire. Make sure you're stopping it on each spot and then we'll do the live repetition. Another thing we need to talk about with the partial target back there, it's very apparent to me where Ben decided to aim at. How do you know where to hold on the targets? I mean, maybe it's, maybe the target's partialed off like this and you have less to, like, how do you know? How do you decide? Experience. Training and experience. Yeah. So you, you feel like, like, I wouldn't just go there thinking, I'm just gonna shoot at the center of brown, the center of what I can see. You no, know, when Ben's talking about standing back here, look at the code, he's like, Yep, I think I'll hold on the AC line. I'll hold, you know, like the top part of the A zone. I'm going to hold, you know, wherever, whatever you decide. Yeah. But that's because, like, Ben knows he's capable of making that shot. But if you get like, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I, you know, your experience will tell you where to hold on those targets. But you need to decide before you do the rep and not just looking for the center of what's available on the target to shoot at. All right, any questions about this? All right. Let's get to it. So we have six stations. You're going to shoot from the red. They're not shenanigans. It's real life shenanigans. Let's recap what we did today. Minus Ben shenanigans. Yeah. So we talked about aiming schemes, how you grip the pistol this morning, that rapid fire, the reactive shooting this afternoon. What was the theme here? Transition. Yeah, target. yeah. So look at a spot and sort of let the gun go there. Notice the more you tense up and try to make something happen, the less that thing happens. So staying relaxed, looking at spots you want to hit on targets, and just letting the gun kind of glide between the targets without trying to shove the gun or add any extra tension. Yeah. It sounds really easy to just say to everyone while we're all just standing here relaxing, but it was really difficult to do, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think the big takeaways you should have from the morning, especially dry fire. So you get some sense for how you want the gun to feel in your hands. How are you going to make that happen without having to think about it? You've got to do dry fire 
present the gun, not slow motion, but like presenting it aggressively and then consciously checking, hey, is this the position and pressure I want, yes or no? Work on transitioning between spots on the wall. Just putting up, paste, as you're seeing from here, just putting pasters on the wall and like looking at a paster and then your gun moves to that spot, like that'll make you really good in a hurry, really precise, and, you know, getting you to look to small spots. It was good towards, especially towards the end of today, you guys, when you do it wrong, you're kind of shaking your head like, dang it, that isn't what I meant to do, which is really good. Like we're not, we're not gonna like make you run laps because you're making mistakes, but it's really good that you understand when you're making a mistake, what happened and what it would take to correct it. Because that's honestly, that's half the battle. Yeah. As opposed to you shooting the scenario, be like, what happened? Like, I'm not really sure. What we'd like is that when you make a little mistake, you're aware of it immediately and you find it annoying. So eventually you'll stop doing it. You'll either stop doing that or you'll stop shooting. Whatever. Either one. Either one. You stop doing it eventually if it annoys you that much. True. <laughs> All together. Also, when you were doing the dry target transitions at the end, just pointing your gun at each target, you should really be perpetually dissatisfied with how it's going. You're like, dang it, like I, my gun didn't stop at quite the right spot. I felt like I used a little too much tension here. I felt like this, whatever, I didn't do this, I should have done that. So if you're really nitpicking yourself when you're doing your dry training, that'll go a long way towards fixing it. If you come up like, well, man, I'm so good. This is so good. Can't wait to post this on the gram. It's like, <laughs> great. So if you really nitpick yourself and you always like, hey, this little thing could have been better. This little part could have been better. That'll go a long way towards improving. If you're really picking apart your shooting and looking to make it better. Yeah. All right, we'll be back here same time tomorrow. We'll be split across multiple bays and there'll be a lot more movement. So you're probably gonna be tired tomorrow. Enjoy. Maybe they're tired today. I doubt it. You guys are tired? Dude, you're like 50. <laughs> I got a question. Oh, sorry. Yes. I thought you were saying you're when tired. You, uh, when you are doing your stage planning, your walkthrough before, before a stage, do you find your targets and figure out the route first and then go back through and concentrate on your small spots, or is yes. all that done at one time? No, I do the route first. And then your second walkthrough, or third, or however many you get, then you, that's when you start yeah, to focus like, in. And basically, in all of the time that I can manufacture for myself is going to be finding spots, staring at spots while I go through the stage dry, right? So however much time it takes to plan out the route and the target order, and then after that, just like programming in spots. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. All right. What do we need to do to clean up the range, Scott? The round, get going. Okay, so. Picking up where we left off yesterday, we did target transitions, we did basic mechanics, grip, vision, looking at a spot on the target. Now we're gonna do a lot more dynamic shooting. Um, I think you'll be moving most of the exercises we do today. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so follow me, we'll get started. Okay, so I'll make a few examples for you here. This exercise, we're gonna shoot the left target from the left side, the right target from the right side. The two in the middle get shot if your bullet's passing in between the two vision barriers. I'll make a, a couple examples, like I said. What's wrong with that? Basically uh, everything. Everything is an acceptable answer. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Anybody? Dot. Over confirming. Yeah. Dot. What was I looking for when I drew the gun? Dot. dot. Looking for the red dot. Exactly. Too much and then, tension. Yeah, that, I was very tense as I was walking through. Then you saw it was kind of like goofy looking, where it's like that guy just doesn't look comfortable because I'm I'm really tense and trying to get in, be in control of everywhere the dot's going, and in a sense that made me lose control. All right, now I'm gonna do more of what we want. My head and my posture is gonna stay up. Okay, so that looked totally different, right? So what was I looking for, for, for started, what was I looking for as far as confirmation? Flash of red. Flash of red, exactly. So in my brain, I'm gonna stand here, try to stay relaxed, looking at a spot on the target. I get the start signal, draw the gun, grip it, you know, grip it the way I know how, not 
death grip it. Just bring it up, grip it, look at a spot. As soon as I see a flash of red, shoot. And I'm looking for the next target. And as soon as I see a flash of red on that, shoot. Then the next target, then the, and so on. Okay. What, what percentage of your normal USPSA match does this drill look like? A lot. 80%. Yeah, I think that's fair. This is like 80% of it. Is I'm going to just try to execute one, grip the gun the right way without tensing up my body, look for a spot on the target, and then react to the react to that flash of red as soon as I see it. Um, should you be able to do this predictive shooting here? Close enough. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. Every, what we did yesterday, <laughs> shooting at 5, 10 yards, pretty much everybody here could, I think everybody, could at least sort of do it at five, 10 yards. So we want you to actually try to execute on that. Now there's gonna be a few things here that people do wrong, but we should talk through them first. These vision barriers, should these ever appear clear to you? No. No, right, you're not looking at this. I really, I really shy away from techniques. Maybe you've heard stuff like, hey, I'm gonna be shooting here, then I'll put my dot right on the edge of this deal. And then I'll be waiting for the target behind it. And then I see the target that, I, that helps me find it. Have you guys heard stuff like that before? Like aiming at walls, All right? I really hate that for this, for that reason, because this, this thing will be clear. If I'm gonna use this for anything, it'll become clear to me. And then it becomes more difficult to find the target behind it. Okay, so I, I really don't like that. Uh, another thing, when you, when you start moving, are you gonna be inclined to stare at your sight? Yeah. yeah. So you're going to see that red dot bouncing. And as we did that little exercise yesterday, if you start staring at that thing, it just increases the apparent wobble. So that'll push you the wrong direction. Even, even though it'll feel weird, the idea is look for the, be interested in finding a spot on the target. Don't look at the gun. Don't look at the vision barriers. Those are really just distractions that are counterproductive. Okay. Common issues that you're going to have on this. Whichever way you're going, left to right or right to left, typically the first one of these that you shoot will be tidy. Then the other one, the hits will loosen up a lot. What do you think is going on there? Not picking the spot. Yeah, exactly. So these two targets are really close to each other. It's actually, if I'm shooting one of the targets, I'm gonna see the other one right next to it, right in the same view. And it's very difficult to disconnect from one target visually, connect to the other target, instead of stare at the red dot and push the red dot into brown and just whack the trigger. That's what a lot of people are gonna do here. The reason for that happening is if I'm shooting the, the if I'm gonna shoot target three, I'm getting here and I'm about to, oh, 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 I got another target to shoot. It's easy just to throw the gun over and hurry up and try to shoot target two before I run out of time. Yeah. So if, you, if, like, if you're getting closer to this side and you're still shooting the first target you're engaging, it's easy just to throw the gun. What's the, the solution target. there? Remember the fundamentals, like look where you want the bullets to go. Don't ride the sight visually. All right, if this is the last target I'm shooting, very common to get hits here on the outside. What's going on there? Yeah, so it could be that I, that I slammed the gun over and overran the spot I'm looking for. In this scenario, we have a vision barrier there more commonly. People are looking for this target. They know they're looking for it. Then they'll see the edge of it start to peek out around the vision barrier. That grabs their attention, and then what happens? Well, let's go there. That's right where you go. So you hit where you look, for better or worse. So you want to be really in charge of where you're looking. Um, we can shoot this with the with the uh, aiming references on or without. It doesn't really matter to me. If you feel you want them or you think they'll be beneficial, you should put them on for a while and use them. Otherwise, we'll just shoot a plane where you're just looking for spots on the target. Okay. The other thing people will be tempted to do is stop when they shoot the first target, shoot that, then maybe go. We want you to keep moving the entire time, not stopping to shoot one target. Okay. Continuous motion through it. Any questions here? Okay, let's go next door. I, mean, I do not think Tom was a distraction one. Okay, I'm going to shoot this drill a couple different ways, and that'll give us stuff to talk about.
long ones are really wrong. Big difference between the three, right? So the first one, notice, I stood here, I shot, I stepped across, and I shot. The drill's gonna be, as you saw, you should use target twice from one side of the stick, step across the stick, and you should use target twice. Notice in the first iteration, when I stepped across, I aimed for a long time, my dot was perfectly stopped, stable, it looked like a dot, I'm like, okay, looks good, now I'm gonna start shooting. For the observe, people observing it, it looked like Joel got all, all tucked into his stance, all comfortable, and then gave himself permission to start shooting, which is not really what we want. The second one, I started shooting, and I kind of stepped across, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna wait until my right foot touches down, I'll shoot a shot, then I'll wait until my left foot touches down, then I'll shoot another shot. Like that's was way too too complicated. Instead, there's the third one, I just shot, I stepped across and did more shooting. So I wanna disconnect my upper body doing the shooting while my feet just carry me across. Yesterday, we didn't beat you up about your stance at all or how you were standing. It's not gonna be the same story today. When you start and stop, we want your feet spread apart, knees bent, ready to move. So notice, I start like this, I step across when I'm Ending the drill, I'm like this, I'm ready to move. If I did the drill wrong and I step across and my feet are like this, now Ben and I are gonna have a foot race going to the back of the bay. This is probably not the way I'd wanna be starting, right? Completely standing straight up, my feet close together. If I wanna run like any way now, what am I gonna have to do? Like spread out, lower my center body or center gravity. Maybe I'll like step one foot wider to then push. Nothing that's efficient. Does that make sense? Yes. So again, I'm shooting based off when my dot or my front, my, my sights tell me to shoot, not how I feel about it or having one foot down, both foot planted, feet planted, something like that. Yeah, so um, a couple other things. So for the, the lateral movement here, because we have these sticks at different directions, for the lateral movement, we're going to ask you to cross step like this. A lot of people don't like that. They find that uncomfortable or they were told at some point that's bad. Right? I recommend you just go ahead and cross step. If you think about if I'm standing like this and I want to walk that way now, like does this look natural to you? <laughs> to avoid cross stepping, I turn my whole body then move. Looks pretty natural to me. Yeah, then what we want you to do is just like just start walking. Right? You're, you're used to crossing your feet over each other, so don't don't feel weird about it. Just go ahead and do it. What we're assessing is when you end up, it's like this: feet spread apart, knees bent. You're actually ready to move. That's what we want to see. Does everybody understand? This drill looks really simple and it sounds really simple. It's really tough to do. So we'll be doing dry repetitions before you even load your gun just to make sure you understand like when you're shooting targets, stepping, like all that kind of stuff. Because when it happens, when you're actually doing the drill, it's really easy to get lost. Like, oh, I shoot one target. I start, no, I'm gonna shoot two targets, like that kind of thing. Why is this drill so hard? Anybody? Because you're like doing two things at once. Exactly. At the same time. Exactly. That's what it is. It's it's just how much brain power you have, and what what we want is hey, just do the natural thing that you've been doing since you're a kid. Like if, if I'm shooting this stick where I move forward, I'll just like it's gonna look like this. That'll be the movement part, and I'll just let that. That'll be it. Let it happen. I'm not gonna try to think about that a whole lot. I'm just gonna use my brain power I have available for shooting. That makes sense. The more conscious stuff you try to do with your feet, it becomes very difficult to shoot effectively. So. Okay, let's get cool. to it. All right, let's do it. Uh, all right, guys, we're gonna do another variation of this track the A zone drill. It's a good drill, right? It's good so far. Uh, we're just gonna make it a lot harder, and it, in, a, in a sense, we're gonna be asking the impossible of you. So. First, the first thing I'm going to do is stand in between the, the vision barriers and I'm just going to shoot these four targets in the same order that I'm going to shoot them when I'm moving. Okay, And I'm not going to try to shoot them fast or anything. I'm just going to draw the gun and shoot them. So aside from the little technology at the end, I'm just going to shoot the drill the same, very aggressively, and try to make it sound the same. Does that make sense to everybody? So that, that sense of speed is like, look, target, look, target, look, target, shooting at that pace, I'm just going to try to replicate that. Is that possible? Maybe. Yeah. Eh, 
Pretty close. It's close. It's not even, like, I wouldn't feel like, yeah, if you can't do that, you suck. Like, I would not say that. Uh, a lot of guys are fast enough at shooting. Like this Absolutely. is impossible for them to do. It's good for them to try, um, but it's very difficult to actually do. I'm going to try to shoot that pace no matter what. The hits are going to be what they're going to be. Now we put down aiming references, so I'll just be looking for those black spots while I work my way through this. approximation in terms of the speed how do you how did i look to you did i look comfortable yeah. i was not comfortable i mean i might have looked like sort of comfortable i wasn't really like i was i was having to hustle in order to make that time so that was 275 for that time like this is what we want everyone to do so you're just going to stream the center draw and shoot at your pace again don't go crazy just draw and shoot at your pace and then try to replicate that as you move through here the key, I think, is putting down those black spots at the speed I was just going. I'm just looking for black, look for black, look for black, look for black. And the bullets will pretty much stack up right there. Then, of course, the next evolution, take away the black marks. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, anything to add here, Joel? No, this is good. All right, let's go to the other side. I'm going to make a couple demos. Maybe a mix of good and bad. the two right notice i've been harping on you all morning about having your feet spread apart and knees bent notice the first repetition my feet are side by side now when i want to get running as hard as i can nothing's really going to happen without some extra effort from me either i'm going to have to kick out a foot maybe i kick out both feet and like coil up nothing good happens then when i get to the end my feet are all together i was really coiled up then I decided to stand up while I was shooting. Again, like not being in the optimal stance I want. The second repetition, when I start and stop, feet are spread apart, knees bent, I'm ready to move. When I moved, it was as hard as I could go, running hard. I'm looking down at that cone, trying to attack it. When I get close, the gun comes up and mounted, and then I'm waiting for the acceptable sight picture, what I need to see, what I need to confirm on that target, which is going to change based on the positions and the target you're shooting. Okay, so yesterday we did shooting that I put in two buckets, reactive and predictive. When you're getting set up in a position, which one is gonna be appropriate? Reactive, reactive. yeah, so, so like, I'm at some weird stand, like I'm not stopped yet. If I'm not sure how the gun's gonna behave, I can just shoot reacting to what I see. React, react, and then it feels like the gun will feels more stable, I feel more stable, then I can just switch to shooting that aggressive, predictive shooting. So I kind of walked in on that far target. Like I wasn't shooting as hard as I could, but like, yep, the dot looks good. I'm still kind of destabilizing, still a little bit off balance. Like, yep, sight looks good. I'm just gonna start shooting. So I kind of walk in on that target. Okay. Way to think about it. Yeah. yeah. Any questions? We're gonna do the same as the morning, uh, the, the first segment. Shoot here, go over there, shoot there, come back, shoot here, and we'll rotate around. All right, yeah. get to it, let's send people. Okay, uh, we've got a little more complicated target transition exercise here. You're gonna shoot the steel on a paper, steel, paper, steel, paper, and finish on the steel. Um, at the end of it, you'll have engaged every paper and you'll shot the steel four times. Does that make sense to everybody? If you look up and down the line here, every scenario is a little bit different. We're not really picky as to order. You can kind of do what you want, but we want you to shoot like steel, paper, steel, paper. Okay, I'll make an example for you. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so let's talk about the elements that are in play here that we've talked that we've, we've talked about this stuff previously.
but now we're actually, I'm kind of asking a lot of you. Okay, so we have different target configurations and distances, which means different types of confirmation, right? So which one of these was I shooting color confirmation on? Far left. Yeah, the far left one for sure. That one, as soon as I saw the gun come onto it and I see that flash of color, I'm gonna pull the trigger as fast as I can. What about this one? So it wasn't like as fast as I could pull the trigger, it was a little bit slower, but I would still say it was predictive shooting. Whereas this one was reactive shooting, like sight press, sight press, looking up here at the, the top of the A zone. It shouldn't be a mystery where Ben was aiming at for that target. Right, So, but I was doing different things for each target is kind of the point. Is That's very difficult for people to do. Like what a lot of people will do is they'll shoot one type of confirmation for the whole thing, or as they're shooting, they'll they'll just start tensing up and start, there'll be no accountability anymore or whatever. If you're the type of person that you get sucked onto the dot, you get shoulder tension, you have your hands doing something unproductive, this drill's complicated enough, it's gonna bring it out of you. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? All right, so obviously here with the more complicated scenario, you're just trying to maintain good technique the whole time. I would like to see that you can apply different types of confirmation and shit on the, pl on the fly. Because if you go to shoot matches, if you're shooting a stage, you're going to be asked to do that. Like you're, you don't have time to think through, hey, how do I, like, how do I shoot that target the most efficiently? Like that has to be ingrained into you where you understand exactly what you can do and you just do it. Make sense to everybody? Okay. Anything to add here? No, I think this is good. It'll, this is all the issues we've been dealing with so far are all going to surface here in yeah. one way or the other. The more complicated the scenarios get, the more, I mean, you can you can only think about one thing at a time, and all the other stuff you can't think about will be what gets you. While you have your dry fire time, like we want you to dry fire before you do the drill, you should be, think about all the things should be going on in your brain. I know it's a lot. Picking out spots in the targets, thinking about which aiming scheme you're gonna to use to address that target, the predictive, the reactive, like there's a lot of different layers to this. Yes. So you should be thinking about all that stuff while you're, you know, getting your time to dry fire. Yeah. It shouldn't be something you think of while you're shooting it. Because that'll be just too late. And if you're shooting good like this, I'll just say, hey, go faster. And then we'll see what happens. All right, let's go next door. All right, another fun, exciting drill. From the cone, I'm going to shoot each, each I know target, where. the upper and the lower A zone. I'll shoot the drill a couple different ways. That'll give us stuff to talk about. Treating every target the same, right? yes, which is not the way to go. Equally lame. Notice I treated every target the same way again. The last one is what we'd want. So notice I was shooting the rapid fire pairs like we did yesterday morning where I'm just basically aiming once, pressing the trigger twice, I'm committed to that second shot. So rapid and aggressive shooting. When I get to the upper A zone, you saw me shoot a different uh, shooting scheme. It was reactive shooting, where you saw dot press, dot press. It was very apparent I was aiming on each shot, right? Is that fair? The first and the second example, someone here will do each of those. Either shooting them all the same way, rapid fire, or aiming too slow. Like they wanna be very accurate on the head boxes, so they'll be like shooting way too slow and reactively on the lower A zones. A couple bad things specifically that can happen is not looking at the, at the letter A's where you want to hit. We'll see hits trending. You can shoot at any order you want, but like the order I shot where it was lower A zone, lower A zone, see hits trending in the way they're shooting, whether you bring your eyes off that target before you're done shooting or not waiting until your gun gets here shooting while the while the, the sight's still on the way in. How many of you have noticed that when you ask yourself to shoot faster, you just start looking at Brown and like, Pfft. yeah, that's most people's tendency. You gotta work a lot to overcome that. And then on the head box, we actually want you to try to get them in the credit card, the actual A zone. So notice the first example I did wrong, I just centered up and put the dot somewhere in the very center of the head box and just cracked off a fast pair. They both went in the target, but not in the, in the credit card. For most people here are shooting red dots, You'll probably your offset will be 
aiming right here at the very top perforation of the letter A, that will drop them in the center of the credit card. Ben, anything else? No. Just like over there, switching your vision onto your sight, watching your sight as opposed to looking where you hit, lots of bad things can happen. Let's go over here. Another target transition drill for you. I'll make a couple examples. We are going to stipulate the order on this one. Like everybody to shoot it far to near. I'll make a couple examples for you. Did you see there? Faster transition. What's that? It was all reactive. Was it though? You addressed them all the same way. Yeah, yeah. They were all addressed the same way, except for that I shot faster as I moved in. Now it's important to like it's important to be really clear about that. As I worked my way in, I'd sit there and stare at the dot on the target, be like, "Yep, it's there," and then I would shoot the split speed to what you think would be appropriate. Right, but the initial confirmation was the was the same thing for each of them. Does that does that track with what you saw? You see that a lot. So when you're like, hey man, you got to shoot faster as as you work your way in on the targets. What a lot of people do is they they aim the same and they they're only focused on pull, shooting a faster split. And here we're trying to break out of that. Okay. The second time when I worked my way in, it was it was dot press dot press. Red smash, red smash. This is what I was had going in my head. So I saw the, the, the dot return for the A zone in the back, and then red smash, red smash here. Trying to shoot as soon as my gun's coming into the target, or coming onto the A zone. Does that make sense to everybody? The reason I want you to shoot this is to get acclimated to what color confirmation really, really looks and feels like. Now watch my gun really carefully this time. Like really, when am I shooting as I work my way in on the targets? See how like as soon as the gun got there, it wasn't even stopped yet. And then already you saw it coming back and the brass kicking out. That's what we want to see is that your shooting is very immediate. Make sense? All right, cool. I think you'll find this helpful to get you acclimated to that. Again, what to get acclimated to how little you're going to see, it's like a flash of the gun, and then both the bullets will be stacked right where you're looking. One last thing, if I could draw your attention to it. If people have problems, it's going to be on this middle target. So everyone, for the most part, understands like it's going to be like dot press, dot press, or sight press. They understand you have to attack this target. You see the colors. The middle target's kind of like an in-between where some people are like, well, maybe it's reactive, maybe it's predictive, maybe it's stopped stable dot. Maybe it's just color of my dot. That's the part where like lots of bad things happen, where there's people kind of experimenting or not stopping the gun and just dragging hit through. We'll kind of see hits like a stripe. Yeah. So the middle target's really a problem one for a lot of people. If you see that stripe, it hits through there. What is not stopping on the target? Your yep. eyes. Your it's eyes. Your yeah, eyes. your gun's not stopping, but your gun's going to follow your eyes. Right. So if you focus on like, oh, I have to stop the gun there. Then you're playing this weird game of trying to stop the gun and time it until you feel like you're done and then to move the gun again. Instead, you just be very deliberate with your eyes and say, no, look there. Okay, I'm done. Look there. Make sense? So you focus on the visual piece, not the, the mechanics. Okay, cool. Let's get you to it. saying that visual piece like it's important. It's a little bit important. You hit where you look. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> Did anybody want to read it again? Can you read it to me? All right, as promised, you got some feedback over the last couple days for probably changes you want to make. So the question is, I've had a lot of people here, is how do you actually make those changes? It would be fun if we all went to the range every day and fired 500 or 1,000 rounds. For most people, that's probably not realistic. So what should your training look like? Yeah, so your habits that got revealed to you, how do you change them? That's the question. Dry fire. Dry fire. Okay, great. So, um, is just doing dry fire, is that going to do it? No. No. You actually, like, so step one, you have to actually recreate whatever whatever bad thing is happening. So, like, in this drill that we were just finishing out on, 
how many guys would, after a certain point, they'd start to get lazy. They'd like look at Brown, like hammer Brown, and look back to the field. It's a lot of people, right? Okay, so most people, if they set up their dry fire, and they're like, yeah, I want to work on that. I got to get disciplined on those targets. Great. Okay, so they'll do the dry fire at a speed they're comfortable with, and they'll just never have that problem. Is that going to fix it? How do we fix it? Yeah, you actually, like, you start at a speed you're comfortable with, sure, but then figure out where you're, you're pushing hard enough that you start to do that, and then actually work through it. How about a hot take? You should perpetually be dissatisfied with your dry fire. Always nitpicking. Man, I wish I could have done this a little bit better. Oh, my support hand wasn't really clamped down hard. That The sight should have stopped it just a little bit, a little bit more to the left, a little bit right. It wasn't perfect. I didn't do this right. If you keep nitpicking at yourself, you will actually make the change. You'll be really critical of what's going on. If you're just happy with, like what Ben's saying, if you're just happy with the results, you'll just keep doing the same thing. If you're happy with the results, I would say you're not assessing what's happening. I just say like you're not aware. Because there's no way it's going to be perfect all the time. As far as actually making a change, so I think a good idea is just to make a list of everyone probably has at least a couple things they want to change about their training. Maybe more than one, maybe more than a couple things. But actually work on those things <laughs> one at a time. Notice today, especially at the end, we did drills that were complicated, had more things going on. Like this drill with the target transitions of steel, there's a bunch of things going on that maybe your shoulders got involved. Maybe you stopped picking spots on targets. Maybe your grip fell apart, whatever it was. Work on the drills to just work on that one aspect. A lot of like what we did this morning and yesterday. Notice like the rapid fire pairs. We were shooting the rapid fire, just talking about how, the way the feeling in your hands, the way you're gripping the pistol. We weren't talking about, oh, but you also want to stand this way. You also need to do this. Like we weren't just piling things on, working on one thing at a time. If you do the dry fire thing, I don't know, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes a day, a couple days a week, maybe three or four if you're really motivated, you will make a fundamental change that sticks within doing that for a couple weeks. I understand. Does everybody understand that? Frequency is more important than duration when it comes to your practice. Meaning like, and I think what, what it comes from is when you fire up your dry fire training for the day, you, you should be thinking through like, oh, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to accomplish this. This is a mistake I was having. That whole thing. As you start thinking about that stuff and you think about what you want to do, that's about half the value you get out of your practice. Is actually thinking through like, hey, what am I actually trying to do? What was I doing wrong before? What does right look like? And then you practice just a few repetitions. And then, you know, it starts to ingrain what what is right? And what, what does right look like? As far as how much ammo you shoot for training sessions couple hundred rounds, whatever your situation is, two, three, four hundred, whatever, probably setting up just one or two drills is plenty for most people. And then shooting a couple hundred rounds on that one drill, assessing what you like, don't like, what's getting better, what's getting worse, what fell apart, then take that back to your dry fire, work on that, and then come back to the range to check your progress. Also notice there's a dry fire component to all of these especially any drill I was running, it was always dry fire before you even load ammo. I could be on the range with a trunk full of ammo and I will still do dry fire because there's a lot of value in that. Almost that much of a bitch. Exactly. <laughs> the gun's going off in front of your face, it's loud, it's recoiling, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that you can't see when the gun's bucking in your hand and you're trying to hang on to it and brass is shooting everywhere. There's a lot of value in doing the dry fire repetitions just because you don't have that distraction of shooting ammo. Does anybody have any questions about anything we did? No? All right, the book we handed you, Joel actually wrote about half of it, maybe two thirds. If you ben know. wrote it, then he sent me a Word document, and I said, hey, I'd make some changes. Sure. And okay. it was, that was basically what happened. Joel wrote it. Um, so the first half of it's technique stuff, just in brief. This is meant to be as simple and brief as possible. The back half is drills. Most of these drills we did. The nice thing is that there's some assessment for example, in a section on double stroll, it shows you some potential patterns on the target and what you're doing wrong, what you could do better, that kind of thing. Uh, it's just to give you something written to actually practice on. Okay. Well, should we clean up the range? We should. Scott, what do you want us to do?